and then usually what we do on on big oak trees like this because they're so wide and they're so big is we we'll actually surround the tree so i'll kind of have one here i'll kind of have one probably back here and then another one kind of back in this area that's shining up this way so that you're really taking advantage of all the nice uh, trunking and branching structures trying to catch as much of that canopy as possible so that's one option the other option is having just one of those accent lights kind of in the middle and then putting some uh, whether it be either some mounting some down lights um, that kind of shine through the trees in a couple areas and create that moonlighting effect on the walkway and the driveway area. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you want to see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's going to look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey, Bob, thanks uh, for your email and sending in your pictures. Um, great great property I think uh, yeah you could do some really uh, nice things here um, if I kind of start with this front bench area I mean <clears throat> one thing I would do uh, you know to light this up so you can sit and relax here I would try and light these oak trees as well uh, with some accent lights so I'm pretty much going to talk to you primarily about some up lights and then a couple options actually for some down lighting um, and creating that moonlighting like you had kind of mentioned but I think what I would first start with is I would start with a couple accent lights on these trees here. And what I might do is actually put put one kind of on that side, um, almost on the house side, and highlight it from um, from that angle there, viewing from the house. Um, you're still going to get some nice uh, canopy lit coverage here. That's going to be um, give you a little bit of reflective light, so you can kind of have some light in this area. I would do the same thing on this tree. I would try and throw an accent light kind of at that same angle over on this side that highlights that. And then what I would do is I'd probably put um, a hanging light on each of these trees. So a hanging light is just these guys that uh, shines down and creates that moonlighting effect where you can have it hanging from these top branches. Um, and it'll do a really nice job of lighting these areas. And you can kind of have it, you know, almost on both sides of the, the bench arms. And it would do a really nice job of lighting that area. If you can get it even up just a couple branches up and have it shining through some branches, you get a little bit more of that you know, that moonlighting shadowing type effect. Um, and then on this area here, I mean, I never like to use a ton of uh, a path lights around a driveway area, but I think in this case, you guys do have some nice, um, it looks like you'll have some nice flower growth that you may want to put maybe one, two, three, four path lights along this area, just spread out really just to, not for the driveway, but to highlight those beds a little bit. And then the other thing I would do, is I'd probably try and highlight these kind of cool features or this guy a little bit. And what I like doing with stuff like this is actually, um, you know, almost moving it and angling it a little bit more towards the fence and then using like a wash light. And the reason I would use a wash light is because it's not as bright as in intense as an up light. Um, so it doesn't create a big hot spot. It just gives it a nice subtle glow. Um, but using those, whereas if you were to kind of turn this a bit and have an, a wash light kind of shining there, through this and then back onto the fence you also create some nice shadowing and some effects uh on the fence as well and i would you know maybe do the same thing with this one if you just even moved it a bit so you could kind of shine it back on the fence and the only reason i say that too is that um you know until this is full grown if you put a light there and just shine it this way um, then it's really a lot of that light is just shining through and it could be a distraction where if it's against the fence um, you're not losing that light it's kind of covering the fence area and especially if you have kind of a unique feature back here and you had this maybe over here and you had that wash light kind of shining through you would highlight that and that and then same thing even just moving this back a bit and then putting the wash light here to highlight this but then create kind of that shadowing and silhouette effect against the fence um, is something I would do in that area. Uh, and then moving to the front of the house, uh, yes, I totally agree with um, kind of lighting up the house and the columns a bit. I mean, I think you definitely want to uh, highlight the house. Whenever we do a landscape lighting job, that's something I always want to look at is if they have some nice stonework or brickwork that I kind of want to accent. Um, and I think in your case, that would be a good fit. I think what I would do is I would use these accent lights um, to highlight some of those areas. The only difference, because you kind of have that second story house and it's a little bit higher, I would just upgrade those a bit to a 35 watt equivalent, which is a 
it's a five watt LED lamp. Um, but what that's going to do is it's going to shoot that light up a little bit higher. And what I would do is I would have one of those lights uh, fairly close to the house, you're maybe 12 to 18 inches back and have it kind of shining straight up these two sides and then up this side. And then same thing, like you said, you have that bush here. I would, you're probably going to have to get it a little bit in front of that bush, um, but kind of shining to highlight that bush, but then also to hopefully catch some of this back um, stonework. And then the other thing I really like doing too is using that same light and having it highlight these areas because what's nice about that is it really highlights that whole entryway and makes it super, super inviting. The only thing I would say with those lights is you probably want to add something called a hex baffle. Um, all a hex baffle is is a little glare shaped shield that fits over the bulb. And what it does is as you're walking in and out, you don't have that kind of side glare from those lights. So you don't notice them as much. You just really notice the nice lit archway. Um, so I definitely do that with six lights across the front and then with just another standard accent light. Um, so that same light, but not as bright. You just have that here that highlights this tree. And then for this big giant oak, two things you could do again, um, really two options. One is you could put a high intensity accent light. So again, that same light, um, but then with that bigger oak tree, just upgrading it to a 50 watt equivalent instead of a 35 watt because it is such a big tree and having one of those kind of in the middle here that really shoots up to the canopy. And then usually what we do on, on big oak trees like this, because they're so wide and they're so big is we'll actually surround the tree. So I'll kind of have one here. I'll kind of have one probably back here and then another one kind of back in this area that's shining up this way so that you're really taking advantage of all the nice uh, trunking and branching structures, trying to catch as much of that canopy as possible. So that's one option. The other option is having just one of those accent lights kind of in the middle and then putting some, uh, whether it be either some mounting some down lights um, that kind of shine through the trees in a couple areas and create that moonlighting effect on the walkway and the driveway area, or a couple of those hanging lights like I talked about where you have maybe one, two, three of those hanging up above the tree that are going to help light the walkway areas um, and really just create that cool shadowing effect um, on different areas of your property. And I can honestly say with moonlighting, whenever we do that on somebody's property, even though they sometimes might be a little hesitant because they're like, well, I don't need to light the walkway or anything. When they see how it lights up uh, and it creates those shadows and it creates that cool full moon effect and you don't see that light, um, it is by far uh, people's favorite effect that we do. Um, so I would highly recommend that. But yeah, hopefully that gives you some good ideas. If you wanted to kind of round out the design a little bit more back here, you could definitely throw an accent light back here. Um, just to extend that viewing angle so that you have it lit up in the front on the side here. And then as you're looking down the driveway, you know, the house is lit up nice, but then you still have a couple of these areas that are lit up with, you know, an accent light back there. Um, so hopefully that gives you some good ideas. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if you need help kind of customizing a kit based on, on all that information, just let me know what ideas you like and stuff. And then we can kind of put something together. Um, we can come up with wire, uh, transformers, all that kind of stuff. Something um, you may want to think about. I'm not sure if you have any kind of conduit running underneath here and how you would get power. If there's some on the garage, you might have to run one transformer to cover this side of the driveway and then another transformer to cover um, this side of the house. Um, getting under the sidewalk can be quite easy. Uh, we have some videos, just go search YouTube, Lighting Doctor, Tunneling Under a Sidewalk. Uh, we use something called a bulb planter drill that makes it really easy. Um, but if there's anything else I can help with, Bob, please do let me know and uh, we'll go from there. Hey guys, I don't know if you can hear me over the dump trucks and fire trucks and everything, but I wanted to explain another thing why it's good to go and test those lights and check things the night before. Um, we decided to do a couple featured trees on the property. So we've got two beautiful palms right in the front. Um, we chose to put two lights on each of them so that we could have it look good for the homeowners from the house side as well as have it lit up from the street. Uh, and a lot of times that's what you want to do. If you have a really key feature that you really want to stand out, use more than one light. It doesn't hurt to do that. Um, but the one thing we did find is last night, even after that first night, we kind of tested out. We had a pretty good idea of where we were going to throw that light. But it wasn't until we got everything hooked up and last night we found that the light was about, it was only about a foot too close to the tree. And what it was doing is it was putting most of the light on the base of the trunk and it wasn't putting enough to the top and just moving it back I would say six to eight inches made all the difference because now we had a more subtle light on the trunk 
and we were casting a lot more light up into the giant palm tree leaves so it doesn't matter how many lights you put in or how good you think it, you are at this if you're not testing it at night checking things out use that battery pack to go and play around um, you're gonna miss some things and you're not gonna get the full effect so just by doing some of those things even if it's your first time doing it you can really um, install lights just like a, a professional landscaper or contractor would do but in a lot of cases even better because most of those guys don't even come back and check their lights at night they just put them in get out and and it's all done and um, I think it's just ego if you don't test those lights first because people are paying a lot of money for these lights uh, and especially if you're getting a good quality one that you don't want to have to redo which so many of you guys have told me you just want to do this once in your lifetime well that's how you go do it and test them out so you can make sure you're getting the right effect um, go and check them out at night hey guys I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape and be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.